Reading with Joan, the place for all the fun. Creative kids, come join us, come. Reading. Hi. Hello. Hi. It's me, Joan. Welcome to another edition of Reading with Joan. I am your host, Joan, and I love reading books. And I love reading intercontinental books. Books that are going to bring children back to the memories of their heritage. Right here in Scotland. If you want me to join me, if you want to join me, every Tuesday and Thursday, 4 p.m., and on Saturday on our Facebook page, later on on YouTube, where we'll discuss about different topics that relate to us. I hope you enjoyed today's reading and I hope you have fun as you read with us every time on this program. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Most importantly, tell somebody else about us. Hope to see you soon. It's me, Joan. Bye. Thank you. Hi kids. Today we're reading about Dr. Harold Moody. He lived from 1882 to 1947. Dr. Harold Moody was born in Jamaica in 1882. His interest in science may have come from his father, who was a chemist. Moody emigrated to Britain in 1904 at the age of 22 in order to study medicine at King's College London. In 1910, Moody graduated and qualified as a medical doctor specialising in ophthalmics, medical and surgical eye problems. So he was an eye doctor. Moody found it very difficult to get a job in his field due to the racial discrimination he experienced in England at that time. He recalled a hospital matron saying on record that she refused to have a coloured doctor working at the hospital. How unfair was that? Even with doors closed to Moody, he did not allow that to deter him from practising medicine. In 1913, he decided to construct his own open door clinic by setting up his own medical practice at 11 Kingsgrove Peckham, which is in South East London. There were many doubters who thought he would fail, but his practice went on to be very successful. Due to injustice and racial discrimination that people of African descent were facing in Britain at the time, and having experienced it firsthand, he decided to set up a black pressure group to fight for their rights and try to eliminate or challenge the color bar. The group was called the League of Colored People. The group also provided welfare and social needs for many in the community. The League of Colored People also published its own magazine entitled The Key that showed the work the group was involved in. The great Caribbean Pan-Africanist and author of the Black Jacobins, C.L.R. James, was also a member of the League of Colored People and later became its chair. During the Second World War, Weedy tried to enlist to serve for Britain, but he was refused once again because of his colour. Determined to help in one way or another, he provided civil defence work as a doctor amongst the falling bombs in England. Dr. Harold Moody died in 1947. His funeral in Camberwell was attended by thousands. Summary Dr. Harold Moody was born just 44 years after the Africans' emancipation from slavery in the Caribbean. Although it would have been a crime for his grandparents to learn how to read and write during slavery, Moody and his father took every opportunity afforded to free men to educate themselves. He took this on to another level by emigrating to England to further his education. Although facing discrimination in colour bars in England, he did not allow that to stop 
him from being all that God wanted him to be. He qualified as a medical doctor and because all doors were closed to him getting a job in that field, he set up his own practice. Due to discrimination he and his people faced in England, he set up a pressure group to help change the British culture of discrimination. What I learned is that even though there's a lot and lot of unfairness in this world, you can still achieve what you want to achieve. Because Harold Moody got rejected by a nurse and also by the British and the British Army to serve in the Second World War. But he still helped. He still did it by himself, even though he didn't get the support other people would have got. Thank you for listening. Bye. Hello kids, how are you doing today? Today we are starting a new book. I hope you enjoyed our last book, Stories from Ghana. Today we are trying something else. Stories from Liberia. Why the Leopard has spot. And it has a lot of stories. It is written by Wood LePay and Margaret LePet. I hope you enjoy it. The first story in the book is Why the Leopard Has Spots. Kids, do you want to find out with me? Let's read together. Long ago, in the days when Leopard had a beautiful coat of solid gold, Leopard and Deer were friends. So there was a time all of Leopard's skin was gold. Wow. What really happened there? They lived in a little village with Spider, who was a great farmer. Every morning, Spider walked to his farm. He walked all day, planting and tending or harvesting his crops. Every evening, he cooked a huge meal. And because there was always more than he could eat by himself, he invited his friends, Deer and Leopard, to dinner. One day, when Spider was cutting off a head of cabbage, he noticed a space in his room. Someone has taken a cabbage. The next day, he noticed an eggplant was gone. Every day, another vegetable disappeared from his farm. Sometimes it was a lettuce or several carrots. Other times it was some corn or cassava. At first, Spider didn't care because he had so much. But when things kept disappearing, he began to get mad. Spider went to Deer's house and asked, Have you been stealing vegetables from my farm? Not me, said the Deer. You invite me to dinner every evening. Why should I steal from you? Then Spider asked the little blue pad, Have you been stealing from my farm? No, said the little bird. You cook such a good dinner for us every evening. I shouldn't steal from you, Spider. Spider went back home. But every day, more of his vegetables disappeared. And he grew angrier and angrier. Finally, he went back to the deer's house and said, Please, help me find the one who is stealing my vegetables. That's easy, deer said. Just take a trap. Dig a big hole right inside the gate of your farm. Make a huge fire in the hole and let it burn down to hot coals. Then cover the hole with dry branches and dry leaves. When the one who is stealing from your farm goes through the gate tonight, the branches will break. And he will fall into the hole and get buried. Get burnt. You are smart, Spider said. Thank you for your help. Spider hurried to his farm and did exactly what the deer told him. 
Then he went back to his home in the village. That night, everyone was sleeping. Deer got up quietly and sneaked out to the spider's farm. He walked carefully around the dry leaves and branches that covered the hole and stole some cucumber. He took the cucumbers home and ate them. Then he ran to Leopard's house. Leopard, dear said, wake up. Spider wants to see you. Where is he? Leopard said sleepy. On his farm, said the dear. Okay, said Leopard. I will go even though it's in the middle of the night because the spider is my friend. The leopard ran to the spider's farm. The deer followed him quietly. Just inside the gate, the leopard stepped on the grass over the hole. The branches broke and the leopard fell. Ow! Into the hole. The hot coal burnt holes in his coat. Ow! He growled. Help me! But no one heard him. Deer was already on his way to the spider's house. When he got there, he banged on the door. Spider, wake up. Come with me. The one who has been spilling your vegetables fell into the trap and is getting burnt. Deer and spider ran to the farm. Someone was howling with pain. When Spider looked down into the hole and saw his friend Leopard, he was furious. You lied to me, Leopard, shouted Spider. Now I see what's going on. You've been stealing all this time. I didn't know. I don't know what you're talking about, Leopard said. Just help me out of here. Spider reached down and Leopard grabbed his legs. He scrambled out of a hole and rolled in the dirt to put out the flames that was burning the hole in his coat. I almost burned to death, Leopard cried. Why did you make a trap? Why did you tell Deer you wanted to see me? Deer told me to make a trap, Spider said. I never told him I wanted to see you. You are the thief, Deer, said Leopard, and you lied to Look at me. Because of you, I got holes all over my beautiful golden coat. You are not my friend anymore. I'm going to eat you up. Leopard leaped on Deer and Deer huddled off into the forest. Leopard raced after him. Now, whenever Leopard sees the Deer, he chases him. And since that day, Leopard had black spots all over his beautiful golden coat. Hmm. An interesting story. Kids, what did you learn? Oh, I learned a very important lesson about faithfulness in friendship, about loyalty, about not stealing, about not lying, about being grateful, let me start. The deer was not grateful or was not satisfied with the meal he was getting. He had to steal. He deceived the spider and he set a trap. He went to the steal again and he lied on the leopard. Kate, do you do anything like this? Are you ungrateful? Are you jealous about other people's things? Are you ready to hurt other people to get what you want, even if you have to lie, like he did with the leopard and the spider? Remember, he ran all his life because there's no peace for the wicked. Kids, let's be honest, good, kind people. Let's be loyal people. Let's be faithful. And let our friends be able to trust us. Thank you for joining me today. I hope these lessons we learned, we will put them to practice every day. 
and until we see you next time when we read another story from this beautiful book i'll say bye bye be faithful be loyal no stealing no lying and no cheating bye